tell you what, it is a picture postcard. Perfect evening from the Monona Terrace on the shores of Lake Monona, along with Chris Garrity and the machine, Gerald Mearshart. I am Rich Reynolds, and we continue on with the action here in Chosen Few Fighting Championships. Number 14 is Dave Vang makes his way to the cage on this extensive amateur card here tonight. Dave Vang fighting out of Wisconsin, Budokai Karate, entering the cage with a record of two up and two down as you check out the Carbon World Health tail of the tape. That's Dave Vang. Now let's look at his opponent, Lucas Nelson. Lucas Nelson has brought some fans with him here tonight as he's not even wasting any time. He quickly comes out of the dressing room and is ready to go. Nelson fighting out of next level MMA with a record of three up and two down and ready to go here tonight against Dave Vang at 145 pounds. Taking a look at the Carbon World Health tale of the tape, two very evenly matched fighters. We'll see how it goes up in the cage as we head up to Chris Garrity and our introduction. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is brought to you by the Tint Factory and scheduled for three rounds in our 145-pound amateur featherweight division. Introducing first this man fighting out of the Coliseum Bar Red Corner. He weighed in at 145 pounds even and hails from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. In four amateur bouts, he has two victories. Representing Wisconsin Budokai Karate and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, welcome to the cage, Dave Vang. His opponent, this man, standing across the cage and fighting out of the Harley Davidson of Madison Blue Corner. He represents next level mixed martial arts and hails from Westfield, Wisconsin. His record, three victories, two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, the electric one, Lucas Nelson. I like the nickname, the electric one. He came out with a lot of firepower out of the dressing room. Looks serious, has a lot of energy. It might fit Lucas Nelson's style. Let's see as he squares off against Dave Vang at 145 pounds. At the center of the cage, both are ready to go and both looking to open up with some kicks. Yeah, nice long little side teep there. And then Vang answering right back. Good little overhand right here. Again, we got a southpaw versus an orthodox fighter. Look for them to use that power side to hit that open backside of the opponent right there. Goes to that left or the right body kick by Vang. Nice overhand right, and they're just kind of feeling each other out, throwing out big long strikes to see where their range is. So far, that right seems to be a real good counter for Vang from the southpaw kicking out of Nelson. There it is again as Nelson shakes it off, said you didn't catch me that time. But I tell you what, Vang has been landing with that right. Right, Nelson keeps coming in with those long kicks, but then he kind of rushes himself and crowds himself. Doesn't seem to be too comfortable throwing his hands, whereas Vang is taking those kicks, brushing them off and throwing back some big hands. And now we see a takedown by Lucas. And Vang got a good hold on the neck right there. Not Nelson, sure if it's yeah. in danger of finishing, but he's getting a good squeeze on it. Looks like Lucas is uncomfortable. Yeah, Nelson is not happy at all right now. The position that he is in, Vang stretching him out, and Nelson is in trouble here early on in the first round. And off come the shorts. That is a good squeeze by Vang. Lucas doing everything he can, including taking his pants off to stay out of that submission. <laughs> It's a good thing that didn't happen in the Rodney Alexander fight. People would have got a different kind of show. How about that for top control? Leans back, pulls up his shorts, That's stays in the mount <laughs> position. True cage awareness. <laughs> now up and mount. Vane trying to buck him off. Lucas doing a good job keeping his weight down. Landed a couple strikes. Now looking for that head arm triangle. Dropping his weight down. Looks like he might be a little high. Shoulder is not on the throat. Doesn't look like it's going to be much more than a neck crank right there. As long as Vang is tough, he's fine in this position. And Gerald, for the fans at home, something you're going to hear coming from corners in a position like that is answer the phone. It's one of the chief 
um, defenses for the arm triangle technique. Can you explain what that means for the folks at home? Right, so in that position, answer the phone would be taking your hand, putting it to your ear as if you're answering the phone to make a little space. Not the best defense for that choke, but it gives you an opportunity. But now we see Lucas here getting the back, getting his hooks in. He should look to land these strikes, but more importantly, reach underneath the elbows, stretch Vang out, get him flat on his stomach. He landed two shots to the back of the head, so I'm yes, wondering if Tom saw that. Yeah, and I, I tell you what, he also hit him in the ear, so he might not be answering the phone, but he could definitely hear ringing right now as Vang now being stretched out on top as Nelson got some good shots in on Vang in that exchange. Good first round, lots of action. Both fighters scoring as we will head to the second round, see if they can keep this pace up here on 57 Sports. A lot of quick action here in the first round. Both guys scoring. Nelson with some kicks, Vangs with some right hands, and then even when they went down to the mat, it seems both guys were able to get leverage and score here in the first round. Yeah, Vang had a good little choke attempt there at first, but when Nelson got on top, one thing I saw at the very end of the round, Lucas actually was under Vang's chin with that rear naked choke. If he had about 30 more seconds, he could have been the fight right there. In a pro round, he would have had the time. Amateur rounds only three minutes long. Both guys expending a lot of energy in round number one. Coming out, breathing a little hard here in the second round as they're back up on their feet and looking to exchange those kicks again. That to my eyes, Vang looks to be a little bit more tired than Lucas. A uh, little more labored breathing, slower movements, and we still look, see Lucas bouncing around, landing the quick one-two and getting out of dodge. Yeah, we're seeing more of that mouth guard there from Lucas Vang showing as Nelson looking for a takedown, driving Vang now into the cage and trying to go to work here as Vang trying to get a good defensive position. And one of the things that happened to Vang was the amount of energy he expended trying to set in that guillotine choke. And as hard as Nelson fought off the choke, you just saw the squeeze Vang was trying to put on. That's going to wear you out real quick. Builds up the lactic acid in those muscles, and you can come out showing your mouthpiece for the rest of the fight. So how does Vang now bide his time in this position trying to get some of that energy back, Chris? So energy-wise, you know, getting it back is one of the most difficult things in the world to do. He's actually not in a whole lot of trouble here because I don't see Nelson raining down a ton of damage at this point, but he's also not being super active, really looking to do anything to Nelson either. So this right here might be his own recovery time. Although he moved his hips there, looking to do something. He needs to watch the up kicks there. But um, I don't know, Gerald, in a situation like that where you've spent everything in the first round uh, on a submission, is it okay in at least your mind and the training you've had to spend the first part of the next round trying to recover, or is that really a dangerous thing to do? Uh, that's a dangerous thing to do, and really what that comes down to is your technique and your conditioning. On, obviously, you want to have conditioning to go 100% the whole three rounds. Uh, not necessarily a realistic thing all the time, but that's where the technique comes in. you got to have the technique to be able to scramble in those positions with the most efficiency in order to save that energy when you need it later in the fight. Good work coming out of here by Lucas Nelson in the second round. He has been in the dominant position for most of round number two as we're in the final minute of this second round. And what has been a long amateur card as we're heading to the top of the amateur card and seeing Dante Skiro getting ready to defend his title at 170 pounds against Alex Bowers. And here we see Lucas just staying on top, being content to basically ride Vang out, land some little shots here and there, slowly advancing, looking for that mount or side control position, and Vang doing what he can to try to re-guard, but ultimately looking too tired or unwilling to expose himself and open up to get that stand up. Yeah, I think fatigue is the big factor yeah. right here. He's, at least in my mind, hanging on for dear life at this point. Although I would expect Nelson to do a little bit more damage when you've got a fighter that winded, but it looks like they're both in a little bit of trouble getting up there. Absolutely, after an energetic first round, a must more passively energetic second round between Nelson and Vang. Final round coming up 
from the Monona Terrace on 57 Sports. All right, here we go. Final round, three of three, Nelson and Vang. As both guys seem pretty winded, we'll see what they got left for this third and final round as we've only seen a couple stoppages here so far tonight. A lot of decisions so far this evening, and this one seems almost destined to be another one. Very strange fighter Lucas Nelson is. Comes in, throws a spinning back kick, then shoots for a takedown. Yeah, definitely an unorthodox setup. Uh, there we saw Vane come out throwing some leather right away. Not the worst advice in the world from his corner. You know, he looks to be down two, is a little bit winded. You got to go for broke sometimes. Would have been nice to see him defend that takedown, try to stay on top, get back to his feet. But Lucas just doing a good job finishing that takedown and securing top position. Yeah, and I'm surprised Vang even has that mouthpiece still in it. Yeah, it's, it's halfway out yeah, as now Nelson breathing. mounting and trying to do some ground and pound. Vang holding on in desperation, trying to block this finishing attempt here by Nelson. Uh, we saw this at the end of the first round. Vang here kept trying to buck and move. Ended up ultimately giving up his back and giving up that rear naked choke. We'll see if he's content to stay here and try to trap those arms or if he gets that reversal or rolls over and gives up his back. Kind of blocking the right arm, but Nelson able to free it now and hit Vang in the face. The action happening right near us here is now Nelson with a uh, couple of strikes and now like he's looks like chin. He's, yeah, got that rear naked choke in as Vang rolled over and that was a bad move right there as Nelson seems to have it locked oh, in Vang pretty doing, good. Doing a good job. Vang turned into wow. him, got his back to the mat, was able to get his chin out of there and allowed him to escape that position. It was a tight choke. Good defense by Vang. Using the cage as well and his feet to get out of that as now it is Nelson looking to score with the left hand. There's a right now. Vang still in trouble on his backside here as Nelson lands a couple of good shots. And Nelson just dominant on top and mount so far. And uh, so far the best part of this round for Vang was getting out of that rear naked choke. And it's not a good spot to be in when the highlight is escaping a submission. He's really got to work to stand back up or try and maybe even get a reversal. It was a good attempt there getting those hips up, but ultimately Lucas staying on top and raining down punches. It would be quite a turnaround now for Vang if he can get a submission here, but Nelson making a mistake, and Vang now is holding on to Nelson trying to finish him off. Yeah, we saw Nelson there get up to the back, kind of go for that armbar, give up top position. Vang got a hold of that neck, and now he's back down. Nelson able to work out of it, gets the reversal, and is on top of Vang here, and both guys seem content to end this one as the final 10 seconds tick off the clock of round number three. That means once again tonight, we go to the scorecards. The crowd liked this one, though. Good action early on, and Dave Vang holds on to get to a decision and go the distance against Nelson. All right, we'll get the official word next from Chris Garrity on 57 Sports. All right, action here between Vang and Nelson in round number three. Another round that seemed to be dominated by Lucas Nelson as he was in control of most of this fight, Gerald. Yep, all three rounds we saw Lucas Nelson on top, getting that mountain back position and just raining down strikes, attempting that choke when he could. Bang doing everything he could to stay alive, but ultimately Nelson on top, dominant, should be a 30-27 decision in his favor. That's, absolutely, that's where you give Bang some credit by just being able to hold on against Lucas Nelson. It was a pretty one-sided fight. Both guys, though, pretty well-winded after this one. We'll see how the judges scored it as Chris Garrity has the mic and is in the cage for the decision. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of featherweight action, we go to the judges' scorecards. 
All three judges have scored this bout the same, 30 to 27, in favor of your winner by unanimous decision and fighting out of the blue corner, Lucas Nelson. Lucas Nelson the winner, an easy one for everyone to score here as Nelson improves to four and two. All right, we're back with Chosen Few Fighting Championships number 14 right after this on 57 Sports.